I now give the floor to His Excellency, Arnoldo Ricardo Andre Tinoco, Minister for Foreign Affairs and Worship of Costa Rica. Señor President. President, Excellencies, Costa Rica wishes to express its congratulations for your election to the Presidency of this Assembly, the General Assembly and reiterates its willingness to work with you for the goals set for this session. We face new and old challenges, challenges in the form of conflicts which are expanding and spreading like fire to the four corners of the world. On the war against Ukraine, Costa Rica makes an urgent call for concrete and immediate action to be taken for a ceasefire and to draw up a peace plan so that the Russian Federation can withdraw its troops and respond for its actions in front of international uh, courts. We condemn Russia for suspending the Black Sea Grain Deal. This conflict has implications far beyond the borders of Ukraine, including food insecurity for those states who depend on Ukrainian wheat and Russian fertilizers. In a world as interconnected as ours, it is essential to recognize that geographical borders no longer have meaning when it comes to conflict or for climate catastrophe. The poorest, the most vulnerable, are those who bear the greatest burden. However, we are still in time to change the direction of our inaction. That is why I am here to propose that this new session is time to take action in four areas. Number one, strengthening the collective security architecture. Number two, a new social pact for the world. Number three, reform of the international financial system. And number four, reconsidering our relationship with the planet. President, extraordinary circumstances require bravery and leadership to change our collective security architecture, which is falling apart like a house of cards. We need to be brave to achieve consensus and agreement so we can overcome the status quo and take the route of positive reform. Not only are we faced with paralysis in the Security Council, but the clear violation of the United Nations Charter by one of the permanent members of that body and the almost generalised non-compliance with international treaties on disarmament, non-proliferation and weapons controls by those who are meant to be the guarantors of our security. At the same time, we urgently need new governance frameworks for cybercrime and artificial intelligence, as well as cyber security. The militarization of new technologies raises specific problems and challenges. Therefore, as per the content of the Belen communique and along with Austria and Mexico, we will be presenting a resolution to the General Assembly on the matter of autonomous weapons systems. For Costa Rica, it is clear that the responsibility for the sustainability of the financing of peace should be most on the shoulders of those who break the peace. That is why almost 15 years ago, or rather 15 years ago, around $1 trillion went into military expenditure. Global military expenditure now has more than doubled, exceeding over $2 trillion, despite the fact that Article 26 of the Charter of the United Nations prescribes the quest for international peace and security via minimum expenditure in weapons. Costa Rica calls for Article 26 to be honoured and calls on all member states to commit to reducing over the long term their military expenditure. Our only weapon should be international law. To that end, 
Costa Rica celebrates the fact that this General Assembly has taken on board the functions assigned to it in the Charter with a more active role in international peace and security. My country is proud, furthermore, to be at the leading edge of this trend and commits to continuing on this path as we cannot afford to wait for a dysfunctional Security Council to live up to its obligations. President, human security is the foundation for a new global social pact, a pact which should guide our efforts on development and international, international cooperation towards the needs of people. That means that additional and concerted effort has to be made to overcome transnational challenges such as migration, organized crime, policies which are at the root of inequality and environmental degradation. Solidarity, shared responsibility and respect of human rights should be our guiding light. In Costa Rica, 11% of our inhabitants are migrants. We are the Latin American country with the highest proportion of migrants as part of its total population. According to the data from the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, we are number three in the world when it comes to total requests for asylum over 270,000 by September of this year. But as a medium income country, our resources are limited. Our needs at the current time and moving forward have been rendered invisible. In this regard, Costa Rica makes a call on the international community to take immediate action so that we can manage migrant flows in an orderly and secure way. We require financial support for the effective integration of these people in our social fabric. Multilateral organizations and financial international financial institutions must recognize that medium and upper medium income countries cannot be excluded from international cooperation and aid. A fair distribution of resources based on the need of countries is necessary. President. My third call to action has to be reform of the international financial system. Redesigning the international financial system should have the aim of achieving peace and security as well as sustainable development for all beyond simply a geopolitical reorganization. This change is required throughout all of the financial institutions at the international level, including the regional development banks, which should be aligned with this shared objective. This is no more and no less than a systemic reform. That's what we need. There can be no reform without a radical reconsideration of the criteria of access to official development aid, under which sustainability and peace would be given priority alongside new mechanisms to close the gaps and asymmetries. We need counter-cyclical solutions to the systemic uh, shortcomings which force us to choose between human security and the payment of our debts. We need more investment, more cooperation, more financing now when we are still in time to take transformative decisions that can support the most vulnerable. President number four, time is running out to save our home planet. We have to reconsider our relationship to the planet. Costa Rica is an example that it is possible to foment and encourage development while also protecting the environment. These two things can be in unison. We face interconnected climate crises. That is beyond doubt. This requires action, firmness and dedication in order to achieve the 30-30 goals and not exceed the 1.5 degrees C of global heating. We continue being pioneers 
in reversing deforestation through our Protected Areas program and environmental payments system, whereby through new modalities, resources are made available and agreements are put in place under the Red Plus program to recognise all of our 22 indigenous territories for their guardianship of our forests. However, due to our geographic location in one of the most vulnerable regions in the world in the face of extreme climate impacts, we are concerned about prevention and preparation in order to ensure that natural disasters, when they happen, have the smallest possible human cost. That being said, the economic cost, and in particular the impact on infrastructure, remains devastating and disproportionately affects the poorest and the most vulnerable, including rural and coastal communities. For these reasons, Costa Rica has always seen resilience as a smart investment when it's based on prevention, preparation and rapid response that is inclusive. That should be our guiding light when we move to renew our relationship with the planet. As a major ocean state, we also make a call on the health of the ocean and for better governance. The ocean is affected by global warming, increasing sea levels, and an alarming increase in marine pollution, over-exploitation of fish stocks, decreasing marine biodiversity, and the loss of coral. For this reason, it is an honour for me to be the, for us to be the, the next co-host, along with France, of the United Nations Conference on the Oceans, to be held in June of 2025 in Nice. Costa Rica, for its part, will organise a high-level event on 7 and 8 June of 2024 in order to raise our level of ambition and also to look at the implementation and commitment to the ocean. It will be an integration, a forum for integration where all parties can share best practices and successful examples of conservation and sustainable use. We are proud to be the second country to sign the agreement on conservation and sustainable use of biological, of marine biological biodiversity, the BBNJ agreement. We will continue to lead the call for a protocol on the use of un, uh, undersea mineral resources. President, Costa Rica is an example that dialogue can be more powerful than guns. When it comes to fair uh, competition criteria, these are more important than, than selfish uh, criteria. Our people have no fear when it comes to countering those who think that might is right. We depend on the international system and those of us who do depend on that system understand the need to have a global system in place which meets the needs of the most vulnerable. The proposals that Costa Rica has made seek to accelerate the decision-making process so that we can get out of the stupor that our organisation has fallen into. We find ourselves at a turning point. If ever there was a time for a call to action, it is now. I thank you. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs and Worship of Costa Rica. We have heard the last speaker in the general debate for the meeting. We will continue the general debate tomorrow at 9.30.